the past month has been marked by a mix of significant global and local events. Notably, the re-election of Donald Trump as President of the United States has had major implications for fiscal policy. During his previous term, the U.S. fiscal deficit expanded significantly, driven by policies that included substantial corporate tax cuts. Now, Trump's proposed policies signal further fiscal expansion, with potential tax reductions that could lower corporate tax rates to 15%. The Federal Reserve lowered its policy rate by 25 basis points to 4.5% to 4.75%, as expected, due to easing inflation. However, future rate decisions will depend on economic data, including the impact of new government policies on inflation and growth. U.S. Treasury yields have risen since September due to uncertainty surrounding the presidential election and potential fiscal expansion. Recent heavy foreign investor selling has caused market corrections. While the net outflow for the year is currently small, October saw a significant $5 billion outflow in just one week and more than $10 billion in one month, highlighting the intensity of this selling pressure. This has been the largest outflow since COVID. The market downturn is worsening due to earnings not meeting the expectations. For the results reported so far, an overall earnings for the nifty companies have been lower than the estimated 2% growth. This trend of missing estimates is widespread across the market, further fueling the sell-off. The ratio of earnings upgrades to downgrades is currently at a dismal 0.36, meaning for every upgrade, there are almost three downgrades. The market is shifting from favoring popular stocks to those with strong fundamentals and growth. Sectors that performed well last year have corrected significantly in the last month. Nifty companies with good results have fallen less, while those with flat earnings or missed estimates have fallen more. This indicates that easy returns are over, and investors should focus on companies with strong growth and fundamentals. Despite recent economic challenges, India remains one of the fastest-growing major economies globally, and this is expected to continue over the next few years. Even after a 40 basis point downgrade, our GDP growth continues to outpace many other countries. Second, our fiscal and current account deficits are well-managed and inflation remains within the RBI's target range of 4-6%, to reflecting effective monetary policy. Finally, our foreign exchange reserves are robust and provide crucial support to the Indian currency. India's strong economic fundamentals are complemented by rising domestic participation in its equity market. Retail investors are increasingly investing in equities, and India's capital market has grown significantly, now representing 4.3% of the global market cap. While recent FII outflows have caused a correction, the long-term outlook for Indian equities remains positive. The Nifty 50 has seen impressive gains, delivering a 27% return over the past year, as of October 31st. However, historical data suggests that following such strong performance, future returns tend to moderate. While markets can experience temporary declines, history shows they tend to recover. Markets have witnessed more than 10% intra-year drawdown in 22 out of the last 25 years. Despite this, markets have ended the year positively 80% of the time. The temperature gauge index remains in the fair value zone. Over long term, equity market outlook continues to remain positive based on deleveraging of corporate balance sheets and expected earnings to remain healthy for the next two years. However, in the short run, given the uncertainties in the global context like the geopolitical situation, central bank policies, and rich domestic valuations, Indian equities may remain turbulent. It is advisable to tread with caution by adopting a strategy which is balanced and resilient. Based on their risk profile, investors having the appropriate level of equity allocation can continue to remain invested. If equity allocation is lower than desired levels, investors can increase allocation by implementing a staggered investment strategy over 3 months for large and multi-cap strategies and 6 to 12 months for select mid and small cap strategies with accelerated deployment in the event of a meaningful correction. 30% of the portfolio should be invested in actively managed duration funds to capitalize on evolving fixed income scenario. For passive duration allocation, one may invest in long-term maturity GSEC papers funds with 15 to 30-year average maturity to benefit from accrual income and potential MTM gains. 
30% to 35% of the portfolio should be allocated to multi-asset allocation funds and equity savings funds. To improve the overall portfolio yield, 30% to 35% of the overall fixed income portfolio can be allocated to private credit strategies, in VITs and select high-yield NCDs. For liquidity management, investments can be made in floating rate and arbitrage funds. Despite the Federal Reserve cutting interest rates, U.S. 10-year Treasury yields have actually risen. This isn't always the case, as the correlation between interest rates and yields can sometimes break down. Meanwhile, central banks are still adding gold to their reserves, although at a slower pace. Looking at the dollar, its strength following the U.S. presidential election could put a damper on gold's rally in the short term.